everyone. Happy Wednesday. I hope that you are having a great day. I know I just got to have an awesome um, live group coaching call um, with my tribe and I just love them. It's so, um, it's fun to see their faces. It's fun to read their comments. It's such a, a joy to answer their questions and as, as a group to pull together. So to each one of you, thank you so much. Um, Paula, thanks for joining. And Julie and Robin, thank you, thank you. So good to see you lovely ladies. A huge shout out to Robin for um, being my go-to on um, events that she attends. I, uh, I ask a lot of you and I appreciate you always like running around and doing things and getting things organized. You know, when I show up for summer camp, Myra and I didn't land until five o'clock in the afternoon and, and we had a party at the mansion at seven. And so Robin and Shauna did all of my running, had all of the food there. They were already getting it ready and, and, and Lonnie was chipping in and, and Jennifer Bonanno and everybody was just there. And, um, you know, please know that the things that, that you see me doing, I never do them by myself. Like, don't give me that much credit. I have an amazing group um, behind me that always helped me pull things off. So thank you, thank you. I love and appreciate each one of you. And Rebecca Brule went and, and got other things. And just, just thank you. I appreciate each one of you. And Sarah, welcome, welcome. Thanks so much for joining. So I really, truly, and, and I'm hoping that we can get some some male input on this as well, because I, I want to gain clarity on this. Like I, I, there's not one woman that when she's told you're whining or nagging that likes that. I, I know I don't like it. And I would really like to understand what is the difference? What is the difference when, when someone states their opinion and how can it be stated such that it's not qualified as whining or it's not qualified as nagging. So um, women, if you have ideas and you've joined me, or men, when you have ideas, hey Stace, um, what, what is the difference? What, what do you all think? I wish that we could have this open dialogue, but Facebook Live doesn't allow that. Um, you know, and, and I know of times, like for me, when I state my opinion versus I know I'm nagging, like, I feel like I nag when I feel like I haven't been heard. Can anyone uh, like give me a witness on that of like, yeah, that's like me too. Like I, I nag when I haven't been heard, but is it like, then what makes it nagging versus like trying to get someone's attention, whether it's your spouse or it's, it's somebody else that you're trying to get their attention. So I don't know, but I know I want to know. And so for those who were at summer camp, ja, I, and I may be totally saying his name wrong, and I apologize, but I think it's something like Zha ja Jing was talking about rejection proofing ourselves and asking, you know, like when you get no or you get a response you don't like, to go to that person. So let's say, um, Sarah, <laughs> I'm not going to say that one loud live, but you guys can read that comment. Um, um, so let's say that. Stacy told me no for something. And, and I really thought she was going to say yes. Like I'm the kind of person that I'm going to be like, Hey, Stace. So, um, would you be willing to help me understand this? Like was, what was, what would have made you say yes instead of no, because then I can learn. Right. So to me, no is just like, not right now. It's not forever. It's just no is not right now. And, and I have no problem finding out, Hey, Rebecca. Hey, Jen. Um, and Mary and Michelle, thank you, thank you so much for joining, um, is finding out what is the difference. So I think that maybe we could all go on a mission and when we're told that we're whining or that we're nagging, if you would ask the person who's calling you that and ask them like, what, what makes it whining or what makes it nagging and how could I do it differently in order for it to be qualified instead as stating my opinion? Because I really... I don't know. So Karen said, nagging is when the other person knows you're right and they just don't want to hear it. They already know. Oh, have any of you experienced that? Um, Karen said, whining to me is just complaining without offering a solution. Okay, great. So whining is maybe just kind of like, I want things to change. I don't want to make any changes and I don't know how to change it. I'm just blah, whining. 
And I agree. I to me, whining is I just want to complain, but I have no desire to either find a solution or hear a solution. Would you guys agree with that? Like, um, and I think whining came from like children, right? Like they're just whining because they're not getting their way. They're whining because they don't they don't want to take a bath right now, or they don't want to like go to bed right now, or they don't want to clean up their their mess and so they're just whining oh, I'm tired because they don't want to do what's required of them too so um, for instance whining I think as as adults could be I'm whining like boo-hoo-hoo I don't have any new practice members boo-hoo-hoo and yet I'm not willing to do the work to attract new practice members which obviously first always starts with our mindset it first always starts with our vibrational frequency so Carl you're the first guy who has showed up. So I'm going to ask you and put you on the spot. What is the difference from a guy's perspective between whining, nagging, and stating one's opinion? And Dina, welcome, welcome. This conversation is huge. Hope that we can come to a consensus so that I can play by the rules. Yeah, I mean, I and, and listen, we want to figure this out really and truly. It, it is a... It ongoing conversation because we, uh, it, as women, and I think for the most part, as women, we get defined more that we're whining or that we're nagging and not like I started this whole Facebook live was saying, none of us want to feel like that. None of us want to feel like we're just whining. So maybe we can all make the agreement that if we're just like running our mouth and we really have no desire to change, we have no desire to do anything about it. We just want to complain. Let's all agree that's whining. Nagging is, is I haven't been heard, so I'm going to keep saying it, right? No, that doesn't mean, though, that it's nagging, is it? Because if I haven't been heard and I feel it's necessary to be heard, what do I do so that I can be heard? I don't know. And I consider myself a pretty, like emotionally, on um, the emotional intelligence scale, pretty high. And I also consider myself a pretty, pretty outstanding communicator. And I still don't have this figured out either. But I agree. I think collectively we can figure it out. Roche, welcome. And Heidi, welcome. Dina, you said mindset. Okay, what do you mean by mindset? How does mindset distinguish the difference between whining, nagging, and stating one's opinion? Paula said, I think the perception can be when the person hearing your message is challenged in some way by what you say. So that's, I think, Paula, is that like what Karen said earlier, was nagging is when the other person knows you're right and they just don't want to hear it. They already know you're right. And so they don't want to deal with it. So it's just easier to say, hey, you're nagging. Um, and so if, they, if they're if they challenged by what we're saying, um, then it's called, it's, so Paula, is, is it, if they're challenged by what we're saying, is that when it's called nagging or is that when it's called whining? Um, Well, Sarah says, nagging feels very gendered. And Dina says, okay, speaking your truth is the mindset, right? Like if my mindset is I'm just speaking my truth, then um, then it's, it's mindset. I guess I'm confused there. Sarah says, nagging feels very gendered. Okay, yeah, because I – so for, for the women, have you ever said to your husband – or your male counterpart, you're nagging me. Um, or do you use a different term? If 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 they keep saying something to you because they don't feel heard, is there a different term that we use? Um, and is nagging associated with control? Like, is it considered nagging because we want to control what the other person is doing or how the other person is thinking? Or, or like in some way control the situation. Hey, Doug, you join. So Doug, what is the difference? What is the difference? And Doug is John Ingholm, a, a awesome friend of ours here in Alaska. What is the difference between nagging, whining, and stating one's opinion? I don't know. Depends on someone's mood. Okay, I would agree with that. Dina said, I was just agreeing that mindset is everything. 
Nothing to do a thing. Okay, thanks for that clarification. Mindset is everything. I agree. Hey, Janet, welcome. McCare, we have got to talk. So send me a text and let me know when you are available. We have got to talk. Dina, I've been told I'm nagging when I'm speaking my truth. Yeah, so what, what's the difference? So Dina, have you also been told, hey, good job in speaking your truth, and when you're speaking your truth, it wasn't considered nagging? Hey, Randy, good to see you. Rochelle, Roche says nagging and harping I use synergistically. Okay, so nagging is when a woman does it and harping is when a man does it. Is that what you mean, Michelle? Karen said, ask yourself, what is your expectation of sharing your opinion? Ooh, that's a good one. Why do I feel it's necessary to share my opinion? To have a certain outcome to be heard, to be right. Maybe that is the answer. Tone of voice, Dina said. Okay, so let's go back to why do we want to share our truth? What is our intended outcome? Hey, Maria, um, in sharing our truth. Paula said, I had a friend whose first husband constantly accused her of nagging. She divorced him, and her current husband is so proactive, she realizes she, realized she doesn't really have to ask for his help. Okay, so, um, and Karen said, how do you know you're not being heard? And again, that's a great question to ask ourselves is why, why do I feel I need to bring this up again? Is it I want to prove myself right and somebody else is wrong? Like that's definitely, I'll fully admit, like I'm, I'm that person and I'm, I'm working to get over that. Like just, you know, prove myself right and others wrong. And I have to give credit to my sister on this one. And this has really, really helped my confidence a lot and helped me in relationships. And she always says to me, do you know you're right? And I'm like, oh, yeah. And in certain situations, yeah, I know I'm right, right? Um, and she's like, well, then who cares if the other person knows? I'm like, I guess it really doesn't matter. She's like, just be confident that you're right. It doesn't matter if the other person knows you're right. It's just, do you know that you're right? And so kind of like what Karen was saying, why is it so important for me if I get into that nagging, and I know exactly when I'm doing it, if I get into that nagging, why is that so important? Why do I want to be heard? What outcome do I want? So this is really about all of us being willing to take personal responsibility for the outcome, right? As well to be willing to learn, like I want to know. So if you're watching this now or you're watching it later and you can help us resolve this of what is the difference between the three and how can we state our opinion and our opinion sometimes isn't just opinion, it's fact. And sometimes even when we state fact, we're considered to be whining and I don't, I, I really and truly, as I, I would consider myself a, a leader in this profession of women, and I want to help get to the bottom of this for all of us. It really just makes easier conversation. It makes easier collaboration. It makes it makes easier unit. It makes it easier to unite as well. Dina said she just learned last night during. Her, her, my first marriage therapy session last night, it never works if you're making the other person wrong. Ding, 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 ding. It never makes someone move closer to you when our goal is to make the other person wrong. I agree. And, and I'll go publicly to, to apologize to my husband and ask for his forgiveness throughout our marriage when I have just been hellbent on making him wrong and myself, right? By God's grace, I think by my own definition, I'm doing better. I'm doing better at that. And we have to ask ourselves, why is it so important to be right? And you know, we can do this with our practice members too, right? We can just get so bent out of shape on a subject matter because we want to prove ourselves right and them wrong, or we want to prove ourselves right and the medics wrong, or prove ourselves right and big pharma right, or prove ourselves right and the insurance companies wrong. Why? Why is that so important? Um, Randy said, it's the tone you use when you're trying to get your voice heard. Okay. And tone. So remember, only 7% of communication is actually verbal. So 93% of it. So what is it? Like 53% is tone. And then 30-some um, 
percent is like all of our, our nonverbal cues and seven percent are the words that we're saying. Hey Cindy, so Cindy is a great friend of mine from childhood. Cindy is um, very high up in the corporate world. So Cindy, I'm sure that you have run into this a lot of times. So as a woman with a tremendous amount of power, a tremendous amount of responsibility, what what is your take on nagging, whining versus stating one's opinion? Um, like, how have you done that successfully in, in moving up the ladder as you have done so very well and earned the respect of men and women all around you in your field? Hey, Carrie, another friend from home. How cool is that? McCare says that nagging is convincing someone to listen to your top values as if they are your own. Perfect. So nagging is, is really, I think, then borders into the control thing. Like, I want you to see things my way. And, and for those of you who are in the boot camp or those of you who um, have been, you know, like in, in my circle, you know, I regularly say, help me see things through your eyes. Help me see things through your eyes. How can I make this different? Help me see things through your eyes. How can I make this better? Help me see things through your eyes. What, what are you talking about here? Help me see things through your eyes. Why do you ask that question? Helping, having somebody, like being able to empathize, right? Um, is being able to put yourself into the position of somebody else to be able to understand it from their perspective. So please, any of you who are watching this, please understand, like I'm just, I'm trying to understand this. And, and my sisters who are on this thread with me, we're just trying to understand, we're not trying to prove anybody else wrong or prove ourselves right. We're trying to understand so that maybe we can take a step forward in this delineation. Um, Dina says, as leaders, we lead, not forcing others to follow. We influence them by our energy and our excitement. I agree. Um, Dina says, whining is a tone. Okay, so so does nagging. So what's the difference in the tone? What's the difference in the tone? And so if we state our opinion in writing, if I write something, how is it, because you can't really communicate tone necessarily in written word, what is the difference then in, in written document? What's the difference between whining, nagging, and stating one's opinion? And is it okay to disagree? You know, I think like that's where my husband and I have had a lot of healing in our marriage is, is in some areas, we just agree to disagree. It doesn't mean that he's right and I'm wrong or I'm right and he's wrong. It's just we have a difference of opinions. And that's okay. Like, that's okay. And, and the, that's one of the things I love about the boot camp is that there are a lot of different opinions that are represented. And we can truly love ourselves by showing love to each other regardless of our differences. Like, we, we can... We can bind together on our similarities and just set the differences over here. And that is one thing I absolutely love about our tribe. Amy, Amy, welcome, welcome. Um, so nagging versus, versus stating one's opinion. So it seems that consistently with the comments, it's been um, tone is one thing. So I guess like, let's check our tone. Um, secondarily, what outcome are we looking for? When we state our opinion, what outcome are we looking for? The next thing is what, um, why is it important for you to be heard? Like what, I guess, again, what is the outcome that you're looking for? Karen said, this also has a lot to do with the person and how they perceive your message. It's not necessarily something you can control. Yeah, we all have our filters. Right? Remember, conscious mind, subconscious mind, vibrational frequency in our body and vibrational frequency of our actions. So everything that we hear is going through that filter of our subconscious mind because in our conscious mind are our ideas, dreams, goals, imaginations, right? In our subconscious mind, that's where all of the dog hair exists, all the things that we've been told, all of the things that we have adopted as our own truth. And that's why it's really important to take inventory of that and to ask yourself, does that still serve me? Is it still serving me to believe that? Is it still serving me to act in that way? How is that serving me and helping um, empower those around me? So I hope that this was a fun discussion um, and that maybe we got a step closer to understanding. I guess the, the difference is, is in our tone, what our expectations are, 
Um, and, and I think, I think it's so important to, um, also just like press pause. Sometimes in our life, it's really important just to press pause. So, um, I've, I've shared this with a couple of you, um, and now I'll just share it in, uh, obviously this is going all over the world. Um, one thing that I, I realized actually at summer camp, Todd Stein, um, it was my first NSA adjustment. And as, as he was in training me, I actually took a fresh breath, big breath. And that's the first time I had taken a full breath since the earthquake on November the 30th. And so like Todd, thank you. Thank you. I so appreciate that you took the time to, to care for me while I was there. And many others of you worked on me while I was there as well. And I'm really excited to and land in, at Sherman to, um, yeah, tomorrow. Um, and, and to be in trained and cared for and Randy, thanks for offering as well. Um, and something I've realized about myself since, since November 30th is when I'm stressed, I hold my breath. I just, I stop and hold my breath. And, and I started trying to figure out like, where did that come from? And I can visually, I can see myself standing right there during the earthquake with my back against that door jam and my hands were up like this on the other side of the door bracing. And I do remember holding my breath. Um, and so it's, it's become, it's become like a defense mechanism from me when I hold my, when I, I get stressed or worked up or whatever, I, I hold my breath. And then I, I really and truly believe that that emotional stress now has landed in my lumbar spine and in my SI joint. And now many of you know, I'm, I'm having pretty severe sciatica. Um, and, and that awareness to just stop for a minute and go inside and look inside and, and do your own reflection and your own self awareness. Um, and then, and then come to the table. And I just want to encourage all of you as well. Um, hey, Pat, welcome, welcome. And Susan and Heidi and Annie, um, Joanne, thank you so much to you lovely ladies for joining. Um, to, I, you know, none of us like gossip and the Bible talks about how powerful our tongue is, right? Like this can do a lot of damage, um, a lot of good as well, but it can do a lot of damage. And so I just, I want to encourage everyone, um, to, and, and Heather, Heather Friedland brought this up in the boot camp and on my Facebook feed, you can see it. Matthew 18 in, in the Bible talks about what are we to do when we have an issue with somebody, um, whether they've wronged you or you think that they've wronged you or something they've done has, has, you know, upset you in some way. And God, who I believe is our creator, um, I think there's lots of evidence for that. He tells us what to do. And in Matthew 18, it says, go to that person. So if Patty had done something that wasn't right with me, didn't set well with me, my, my duty, my responsibility, and my obligation, if I really want to have it resolved, right? If I want there to be healing for me is to go to her and say, Hey, Patty, so this is how I observed it, or this is how I took what you did. Can we talk about it? Now, if instead I went to Dina and I was like, Oh my gosh, Dina, can you believe blah, 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 blah. Well, the situation isn't between Dina and I, the situation is between Patty and I. So what does Dina have to do with it? Really nothing. So Matthew 18 says, first, go to that person. You individually go to that person and try to get resolution. So let's say I went to Patty and I wasn't able to get resolution. Um, and, you know, maybe I tried several times to get resolution. Like, time more than once perhaps, right? Maybe it was a bad day for them. Maybe it was bad timing for you to approach them. Like we don't know, right? But let's give each other the grace in order to have that conversation. So then, then in Matthew 18, it says, if going to them by yourself doesn't work, then take a brother or a sister and go to them together in order to get resolution. But our goal has to be to have resolution, to have grace, to have 
the, the conflict resolved. And, and I truly believe that when we don't go to that person and yet we talk about the situation, our only desire is inflammatory. Our only desire is to make it worse. Our only, like we were not really seeking a resolution. We're really not seeking to make it better. We're only looking to like add fuel to the fire. So for those who are watching now or who will watch, hey, Heather, I was just talking about Matthew 18, or who are watching later, Please do yourself and those around you the, the classiness, the integrity, the, um, the adult, the professional, the loving. I mean, I could, I could add a whole bunch of, of, of things to that um, thing is go to that person. Because think about this. If you had wronged somebody, wouldn't you want them to come to you? instead of making a, a, a statement about you, wouldn't you rather that they came to you first so that you had the opportunity to correct it? Um, you know, I, I and, and thank you, Dina, for all your hearts. You know, if, if I have hurt somebody or said something or done something or posted something that has rubbed you the wrong way, like number one, Make sure that it's not like just a moment of emotions. I think our society has also become like extremely narcissistic and that like that offends me and 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 that offends me. Like number one, like grow up, you know, everyone's not out to get you and the world isn't all about you. It's about all of us together. However, give if, if it's something that persists, instead of doing this, go to them go to them. And if, if I have done something, come to me, like I'm, I'm that person, like I'm, I'm going to come and say something. Um, and so I, I think that we can all just step up our game in that way. Um, and, and that is speaking our truth. So be really like, think about it. And for me, like, think about it and pray about it and then act. Um, my grandma always, always said, you know, tomorrow is another day right? Tomorrow's another day, another opportunity to bless others. Another, oh, I got to look at my schedule here. Um, and I have to jump off because I have a call right now, but I hope this was a helpful to each one of you. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for participating. Um, if you want to make a comment, you don't want to make it public and you want to just send it to me, please do so. I also, I really do want to understand this better. So if you could either comment below or send me a message, or if you want to jump on and do a Facebook Live together about it, um, I think it's doing all of us a big service to kind of like finally figure this out. Have a great day. God bless you.